time. Perfect. So good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to be here today on this kind of a rainy morning, right? Yes. yes. Well, it's not coming down too, too hard. So um, we're going to talk about uh, eating for vitality and for everything to be healthy, not only our bones, but for everything. And uh, who knows what two really important components um, help keep us full of energy, vitality, and healthy or overall wellness. Can anybody think of the two main things? I'm sure you know them. Calcium. Calcium. Eating. Eating right, right? Eating right. Eating right. And exercise. Bingo. Very good. Hooray. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay. So today uh, you're going to learn about senior specific nutrition, uh, eating for vitality, strong bones, and overall health. Um, since I'm a dietitian and I'm a foodie, we're going to talk about uh, how to get together some easy, balanced meals and snacks. I know now a lot of you are eating, uh, cooking for one or two, right? So that can be challenging. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and just have overall, you know, healthy habits to maintain your wellness. Okay, so let's talk about uh, what osteoporosis is. Um, so as you know, we are in our senior years, our bones can become weaker. So the good news is there's lots of things you can do to prevent that. So what can happen with osteoporosis is, um, you can see in these pictures, the bone kind of looks like a honeycomb, right? Yes. Right? So, um, so bone, our bones are actually living tissue. Um, and as we said, the inside of the bone looks like a honeycomb. So to keep our bones strong, the body actually breaks down the old bone and replaces it with new bone. So this is going on through our whole lives. So osteoporosis um, and weakened bones can develop when the bone that breaks down is not replaced or it's not re replaced as effectively. So there's lots of things we can do to prevent that. So we're going to talk about that. So um, now the, the, um, the bone, which forms the walls of a honeycomb with osteoporosis, it, it gets smaller. So you can see how it looks normally, and then on the right, with osteoporosis, how it starts to look. And the spaces between the, grow, the, the, the bone actually grow larger, so there's more space in there. Uh, and the outer shell of the bone gets thinner making the bones weaker. So to prevent this from happening and to uh, prevent your bones from weakening, but like we were saying before, good nutrition and exercise, right, that's your best defense. Uh, also, uh, exercise also is really important, right? So you stay strong and uh, it also prevents falls and injuries exercise. So it's really important because we know as we get older, Unfortunately, falls can tend to happen more often, and that's not good. We want to prevent falling because we all know what happens if we, we fall a lot. So we want to prevent that with uh, keeping ourselves strong and with exercise. Okay, so let's talk about maintaining healthy bones. So I'm sure you've all heard weight-bearing exercise. So what is exactly weight-bearing exercise? Weight-bearing exercise is when you use your own body's weight to exercise, right? So when you use your own body's weight to exercise, that strengthens your bones and strengthens your muscles and it strengthens your balance. So Evelyn, I just want to add that everybody here is doing weight-bearing strength training. Oh, beautiful. Um, and at least right now, just once a week, they're doing that. However, we don't know if they're doing, they might be doing it twice or maybe three times, right? Yeah. So the more the better. So once is fantastic. And then if you can build up to twice a week, even better. And then eventually three times a week, that's, that's great. That's the best, one of the best things you can do to stay strong and prevent fall. So that's good news. Keep up the good work. So let's talk. Oh, and the other thing is when you're taking on new exercise, you just want to make sure it's cleared by the doctor, right? Because you want to do everything safely. Okay. So um, there's lots of fun things you can do for weight-bearing exercise. Who here likes to walk? Walking is great. How about dancing? That's fun. 
Stair climbing? I don't know. Does anybody here like stair climbing? Wow, that's a lot of a lot of stair climbing. I don't like it. You do? Yeah. Stair climbing. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm used to it now, but I gotta watch it with him. <laughs> slowly, 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 slowly. The same for all of you. Beans are super good, right? Beans are super good, but we have to watch the beans too. We're not used to eating them. Slowly incorporate, yeah. Okay, so, um, so now we know the deal with why it's so important to have fruits and vegetables. And again, we'll talk more about that, but if you're, in, uh, if you're not used to eating like the raw uh, vegetables, cooked is fine, you know. Um, that helps with digestion, easier to digest. Soups, you know, soups, you can make a nice uh, vegetable or vegetable and bean soup. Oh, of course. So um, you can do cooked. You can do, uh, how about frozen, right? You can do frozen in the microwave. That's a good way because frozen vegetables are just as uh, healthy because they're picking them off of the field and then they flash frozen right there. So that's fine. You can buy organic, right? Organic, if you can, you know, organic is good if, if it's in your budget, right? Um, I don't want somebody not to eat a fruit or vegetable because it's not organic because <coughs> fruits and vegetables are just good for us. So the more we eat, the better. If you prefer organic and you can get it by all means, but I don't want that and that to limit somebody from eating fruits and vegetables. There's something called a dirty dozen and a clean 15. Very good, yeah. So certain certain uh, fruits and vegetables yeah, that's a really good point. So he he was saying a, the dirty dozen. So that that's the list of fruits and vegetables that have the highest um, residue of pesticides. So if somebody so when I'm in the store and people say, oh, you know, what should I do? I want to get organic, but I can't always afford it. So I say, you know, you go online, get the list of the dirty dozen. If you, and again, that's just a personal preference. If that's what you want to do and get more organic, um, you can look at the list of the dirty dozen. And you know, ShopRite gets the organic on sale all the time. You can shop the circular and see you know, what's on sale in the organic. Sometimes when the organic goes on sale, ShopRite is the same price as conventional. So that's a personal preference, and that's something you can do. Uh, and then the Clean 15 is uh, a list of the fruits and vegetables that have the lowest uh, residue of pesticides. So, you know, most of you have, have uh, smartphones. You can just Google it, or, you know, if somebody has a you know, computer, you can go to the library and look at it. Up. It's called Clean 15. Yeah, so there's two lists, the, dir uh, the Dirty Dozen, I know that one. Yeah. and then the Clean 15. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. What's that? Can you explain further what's on these lists? Yeah, so the Dirty Dozen is um, of the list of 12 um, of the fruits and vegetables that have the highest level um, of pesticides. Yeah. What would they do? Uh, I believe strawberries. Very good. Yeah. Strawberries. You should buy organic. Strawberries, spinach, potatoes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really to my head. Um, now again, I don't want people to be like, oh my god, I can't eat this because it's not organic. So what would you do? Just wash everything well, right? Oh, wash yeah, everything washing, well. I wash potatoes with soap and water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So just wash everything well and you'll be fine. It's it's supposed to be safe levels. Right. So just wash it well. If you can, get the organic. Don't worry about it. And then the clean 15 is a list of the 15 fruits and vegetables that have the lowest levels of pesticides. Never no, no, if, if you would like, I mean, I'll finish the presentation, and then if there's time, I, I'll go on my phone and I can read it, read it to you. I have it right here. Oh, she's got it. Okay. So, but we can share where you can get it. So it's yeah, ewg.org is where you. Yeah, go. the envir I believe it's called the Environmental Working Group. Ewg.org. Yeah. So moving along here, you can see the other side of the plate, a quarter is grains and a quarter is protein, right? So we say for the, who knows what grains are? Anybody want to? Rice. Rice, bread, pasta, uh, cereal, right? And we say try to make half your grains whole grains. So whole grain like whole wheat bread, right? Um, oatmeal is a whole grain, you know, whole grain cereal. And you, you know when you're at the store, 
you're like, well, how do I know if it's a whole grain? It's mu it says multi-grain, it says 12 grain, it says 10 grain. The, the first ingredient should be the whole grain, or it will say whole grain on the package. So at least half your grains, try to make them whole grain. So in other words, brown rice as opposed to white rice, that kind of thing. And then protein, who knows what protein is? Meat. Yeah, meat, seafood, um, poultry. There's actually plant proteins too. Plant protein. So the, um, we were talking about beans before. Beans is a plant protein. Tofu, nuts, peanut yes. butter, seeds. Yeah, those are all plant proteins. And they're really good for us too. And then last but not least, stay hydrated. And I know that could be my father always complains about that. He's like, they tell me to drink water, and then what happens when you're drinking a lot of water? You have to go to the bathroom. Yeah. So there's, um, you know, we say at least try to be, uh, have at least six glasses of water a day. But then there's other ways you can get water into your, um, into your day, eating fruit. Right? Fruit is full of water soups. I've never thirsty, so that's a problem. My daughter always. Yeah, has. and that's a good point. As we age, we lose the thirst cues. I just never, never was a water person. Give me coffee. Yeah, or de I think the decaf is considered. I think the caffeine does isn't considered because I mean I'm sorry, caffeinated coffee isn't considered because of the caffeine. It's a diuretic, but decaf would count. Yeah. So the de the decaffeinated coffees and teas would count. So remember we were talking about the uh, fruits and vegetables having all the antioxidants and phytochemicals and vitamins and minerals. So each different color represents a different antioxidant. So we tell, like we tell the kids all the time, eat a rainbow every day. So that means eat a rainbow with all the different colors of fruits and vegetables. There's so many different colors, right? Red, green, purple, blue, white, yellow, orange to name a few. So, and this, by eating a rainbow every day of different colored fruits and vegetables, and again, they could be frozen, they could be canned, they could be fresh, it could be anything, it's really good for your eye health, really important. I know as we age, night driving can be a little, you know, dicey. So, um, eat that rainbow of fruits and vegetables. You know what's especially good for our eyes? Leafy green vegetables. Yeah, so try to get a leafy green vegetable in, in your day every single day. It will support your eye health. And then just eating the rainbow also supports heart and gut health too, our, our bellies, our gut health. The fiber um, breaks down in our gut to feed the uh, healthy bacteria in our gut. Anybody here that hear, hear about taking a probiotic? Yeah. yeah, the good bacteria. Through life, you know, we've all had to have gone on antibiotics and things like that, and that um, can kill off the good bacteria in our gut. So we want to um, increase the good bacteria, the good flora. So believe it or not, eating fiber foods, when it breaks down in our gut, that actually becomes the food for the good bacteria. So it's like giving your, your, um, the good bacteria and the good flora in your gut a healthy diet. So um, that, that's another reason why it's important to eat fruits and vegetables every day and or beans, seeds, nuts. And again, just be mindful of how you feel, right? You want to start slowly. You don't want to overdo it and give yourself the belly. Well, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I would love to know more about how we can increase our calcium with our own, you know, with our food instead yes. of taking supplements. Sure, okay. That. So that's actually the next slide. Oh, uh -huh. wonderful. That's what we're hoping for. Yes. Thank you. So the reason why I'm spending so much time on fruits and vegetables is because as a registered dietitian, to me, it's just as important as calcium. Just as important. So here is the, as to her point, here is the calcium slide. So calcium, uh, so these are the senior specific nutrients now. So calcium is important to strengthen your teeth and bones. And it's also needed for your metabolism. So we need at least three servings of calcium a day, right? So calcium would be dairy foods, right? There's dairy foods. There's also non-dairy uh, calcium foods, like uh, there's the almond milks um, and the plant milks. Those are also um, enhanced with vitamin D and calcium. So dairy, 
As we age, sometimes we have uh, issues with lactose. Mm -hmm. Anybody experience that? Yeah. So they've got the lactose-free milk. How about coconut milk? That's good. Is yeah, coconut milk is good. A lot of these plant-based milks are enriched with calcium and vitamin D. And they'll say it on the label. So your, your, your cow's milks, your, um, your plant-based milks, cheese. Cheese is a good source of calcium. Everybody here probably likes cheese. Cheese yes. is a big favorite. Um, and there's also good, a lot of low-fat cheese options, too. So if any of you are watching your, cow, uh, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, um, they, the lower fat dairy is a good option. Yogurt, anybody here like yogurt? <laughs> Yogurt's really popular. Yogurt is a little more easily uh, digested because uh, during the fermentation process, it breaks down the, lac the, um, the lactose. So uh, some of you can tolerate the yogurt better. There's even lactose-free yogurt too. And then, like we were saying, remember we were talking about all those vegetables? I get to me, uh, fruits and vegetables are just as important as calcium for healthy bones because it, it pro also promotes, um, uh, lowers the inflammation in your bones and in your joints so you can move better. And you need to move better for your healthy bones. So that's just as important. That's why I spent so much time on it. So, again, leafy green vegetables, good source of calcium as well, as also for your eye health. Okay, um, beans and legumes, right? That was also a good source of calcium. And then there's salmon and sardines. Good source of calcium. Salmon, can you, can you see that up there? If you can't hear me, you can also, I'm just no, reading off of the slide. short and somebody's head. Oh, here. Uh -huh. Let me read that here. So again, so I can say it out loud again. And also, I will send you this PowerPoint slide. This, so if you guys want the handouts, you can get them as well. <coughs> so again, leafy green veggies, beans, legumes, salmon, and sardines, right? As, long, as well as all the dairy foods. What's legumes? Beans. beans. Oh. Yeah, like soy. So That's all right. Good question. No, good, every question is a good question because I, I want everybody to understand it. Like peas, split peas, are legumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can make all those soups. Those are good. So uh, also, See, these are, we're talking about everything in this presentation is senior specific, right? Senior specific nutrition. So let's talk about vitamin D. Also goes along with healthy bones and with calcium. It's calcium's part. So um, vitamin D, vitamin D is good for our bones, our immunity, and actually our mental, mental and physical health. It also supports our neurological health, our nervous system. So what are good sources of vitamin D? Dairy, eggs, fatty fish, fortified cereals. But I, I recommend, you know, I, when people ask me what pills should I take, because our desk in Parsippany, any, have you been to the Parsippany store at all? Our desk is right next to all the vitamins, so people are like, you know, what magic pill should I take? And I'm like, well, it, you know, I promote food, food first, but I do always recommend a vitamin D3 supplement, right? Um, because vitamin D3 is the sunshine vitamin, right? And are we always out in the sun all the time? No. So we're all vitamin D deficient. Yeah. So I recommend at least 2,000 IUs of vitamin D3 a day, at least. I think that's very, very important. If you take, I'm sorry, if you take calcium with the vitamin D3, is that enough? In the Probably not. No, probably not because if you look on the, the bottle, it'll tell you how many um, IUs are in the um, in what you, you know in the daily <coughs> serving, and usually it's not anywhere near two thousand. At least, <laughs> at least if not more, you probably need more than that. Yeah. Fatty food, fatty fish. Fatty fish. Yes. yes. What's the best? Um, well, they're all good. I mean, salmon is very, very, you know, tuna, salmon, bluefish, you know, whatever you could get. Yeah, they're all good. How about vitamin A to B3? That's, that's um, I think, very, very good. You know, now, now we're seeing the pills, um, the, the vitamin K2, D3 combination, and I'm so glad they have that available now. It's, um, 
It's um, K2, vitamin K2. Has anybody heard of that before? Yeah, back there you've heard of it. Vitamin K2 paired with D3. I think that's a really great supplement to take because it pairs with vitamin D and it also, the K2 is for our um, vascular health. So our, our veins and our arteries keeps it more flexible. It will help prevent, you know, as we age, we're getting the, uh, the hardening, right, of the arteries, and that keeps it more flexible. D3 and K2. If you can find that, I know ShopRite sells that now. D3 and K2. Yeah. It's yeah. A, it's a combination of one. Yeah, yeah. And the one that ShopRite sells, because I buy it, <laughs> is the, um, I believe the D3 is 5,000 I use, along with the K2. And I think that's a great, good, good point. Great supplement to take. Yes. Can I share something? Sure. My recent blood work, my doctor said I have way too much um, calcium and D3. So be watch it. So I'm, I have been taking the 2,000 I use, but he told me to cut down. The so, so it depends on how I don't know if you've noticed, but I have not, in this presentation, I am not um, suggesting taking, to your point, yes. right? Because she shared with our group that her doctor was telling her her calcium is too high. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but I am not suggesting taking a ca calcium supplement. Take two, I do recommend D3, right? And I do recommend the D3K2. Now, the, you know, you do what your doctor is telling you to do, right? I'm not a doctor, I'm a registered dietitian. Um, I'm sorry, what is your name? Susan. Susan shared that her doctor told her her calcium is too and high. D3. So you're, okay, so if he's too telling you your D3 is too high, then too high. you don't take it. Yeah. But you're the, um, definitely the, the minority. I would say nine out of 10 of us are very, very deficient in D3. Now, have you been taking calcium and D3 for a long time? For a long time, Okay, yeah. all right. So, so if you're doing that, and that's why it's really important to have your physical, yes. your physical exams. Yes because, uh, annually, yes. because then with the blood work, you know, they'll tell you what's going on and then you can easily fix that. So that's why it's so important. So I still recommend, it's really important to take D3, at least 2,000 IUs a day. Yeah, and I like your point, the K2 and the D3, that's excellent. So would you still, if you did took this, then would you still take the calcium with the D3 in it too? If your doctor is recommending that, I don't want to, she, Susan shared that that's what her doctor told her, yeah. right? Yeah. Work with your doctor. Yeah, work with your doctor. Work with your doctor. Yeah. It depends on your blood work. Yeah. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. I mean, that's why we always recommend go for your annual physical exam. Oh, yeah. Yeah, now until December, it looks like. Yeah. He but said, I still do need it, but I have to cut it down because yeah. my, my body has too much. Okay, so Su Susan, is, Susan is different. You know, everybody's unique. Yeah. Everybody's yeah, unique. Everybody's yeah. So you do what you're doing as per the doctor, right? Mm -hmm. um, if, if in Susan's case, she's going to, instead of taking a supplement, she's going to get it from food. Right. Yeah. yeah, right? So you do what the doctor recommends. It's always good to get everything through food, and if you're not getting enough of it, that's where the supplements come in. That's why I recommend vitamin D3, because most of us are deficient. Does that make sense? Okay. Oh, like that would yeah. be perfect. Thank you. Okay. So the food labels, everything that you buy, every package has a label, right? And so if you can see here, can you guys see this label? Yeah. Right? Um, it says there's eight servings in the package, right? Yeah. <coughs> and the serving size is two-thirds cup, right? So every package is going to be different, but all the nutrition facts here are based on the serving size, right? So the saturated fat is what you want to watch, you want to keep that low. Um, down here, under protein, it says calcium. Can you guys see the vitamin yeah. D and the calcium? Right. Yeah, so um, another point with the food label is if something is 5% or less, that's considered a low source of something. If something is 20% or more, it's considered a high source of something. 
So you can see in the right hand column, percent daily value. <coughs> so if you see the calcium, there's 20% there. Yeah. So that's a high source of calcium. That's 260 milligrams. Yeah. So the 5% is considered a low source of something, and the 20% um, or more is considered a high source of something. Yeah. And if you're not sure, you know, you'll see like the the grams and the milligrams, like the calcium is 260. I think they tell tell you to try to get 1,200 milligrams of calcium a day, right? Yeah. So then, so then that's 260. So that's towards your 1,200. Any questions about the food label? I don't know how to stop eating sugar and chocolate. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a little, yeah. Well, you know what my favorite saying is? There's no bad foods, there's bad portions. <laughs> so do, do it mindfully, right? I mean, we, it's, hey, look, I mean, it's great to eat healthy, but we all deserve a little treat, too, right? That's so, right. right? So like a martyr. Yeah, no, you want, yeah, you, you guys, you guys are seniors. It's all about quality of life and balance. So treat exactly. yourself mindfully, you know. Yes. With, like we tell the kids, the, the always foods is, is the my plate that you saw in the sometimes foods or the treats. <laughs> so I just want to make sure I cover everything because I know the time is up now. And anything else that you'd like me to talk about? Well, I, I think, too, that the audience is guiding us, too. Okay. I, I, we asked them to come prepared with some questions. Oh, good. Yeah, they've been asking great questions. Yeah. 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 Any, should I ask them if they want any, have any other questions? Okay. Sure. Any, any other questions? I saw you flip by avocado toast. Yeah. Now, let me see. So, you know what? Avocados are really good for you. Just go back here. They're really, really good for you because what do they have in them? They have healthy fats. They have vitamin E, which is really good for us, our skin. Um, high protein. High, uh, so the, av the avocados, make sure it's just really good for your heart health. So now, I don't know if you guys noticed, they have small avocados in the store now, right? And people, when I would do, I would do these virtual presentations for the Atlantic Health Community, and everybody would ask, what? why does my avocado turn brown? What am I supposed to do? And they have the small avocados now. So you could eat the whole avocado, because it's small. And you don't have to worry about it turning brown. It's really good for you. It's really good for you, the avocado. So the, the avocado toast, right? You just let it get a little soft and you just spread it on your toast. And it's, it's like so healthy. It's so good and it fills you up. If you, for those of us who want to keep our weight healthy, right? Um, protein, healthy fats, fiber, these things keep us full. And these are just some easy breakfast ideas. Mini bagel with cream cheese and fruit. The avocado toast, you can top it with an egg, <coughs> whole grain cereal. Any other good you guys are asking excellent questions. Any? One question. Mushrooms? Mushrooms? mushrooms are excellent. Oh, okay. Good question. Actually there's vitamin D in mushrooms too. Yeah. Mushrooms are very, very good. Okay. Anything else? What happens if uh, your doctor tells you um, you have to limit your calcium? Limit, my, my calcium scores, my calcium's high, okay. but I also have a higher reading for cholesterol. Yes. And I don't even eat meat, so I have to now omit, she is telling me to omit dairy. So it's been a bit of a challenge. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah. So, and you look so good and slim and trim. Uh, you know, the cholesterol is genetic, too. Yes. Yeah. So I'm sure yes. that's a genetic component. Yes. A lot of us have that. So that's where the plant-based are a great way to go. So there are plant-based um, calcium foods, right? Like we were saying before, right? They have the plant-based milks, mm -hmm. um, which are fortified with calcium. They have, you know, leafy green vegetables are a great source of calcium. Um, nuts, dry fruits, yeah, lots of plant-based mm -hmm. calcium for you to have. Uh, plant-based is a great way to go because you're. You know, we, I, me too, we were raised where you better have, you know, animal protein, if you, you know, for your protein. I would tell my kids that. And then as I learned and embraced more of a plant-based lifestyle, there's, um, there's protein in all the plants. 
right? And there's calcium in a lot of plants. We don't have to have animal sources of dairy and animal sources of protein to stay strong and healthy. We can get the plant. Thank you. So what's the difference between eating the you know, plant-based food with added calcium than taking a pill? Okay, so good question. Are they both added? I mean, are yeah. They added? Yeah, good question. Um, the if if you need calcium, right, uh, and it, and you want and you have like like Christine was sharing, you know she's got to watch her cholesterol, right? So she can get the nutrition she needs lots of ways. Um, food food is always best. I always say food first. If you can get it through your food sources, that's the best way to do it. Uh, or if you can't get it through through your food sources, then you can take the supplement, which is why, you know, I mean, I'm always promoting, you know, people come to me, what magic pill can I take for health? And I'm sending them into the produce department. But some of these people don't want to eat it, right? They don't want to eat those foods. So then what's the next best thing? A pill. I'm just wondering what the, the added vitamin is that whatever added they're putting into, into the food. Is that the same quality you that, or the same? Is the same that is, as the vitamin? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's the same. same. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I just was going to say, my husband is like a work at. He works at five thirty every morning. He's very thin, and he is almost vegetarian, and he his cholesterol is off the charts. Yeah. And so, in your case, and he talked to the doctor, and the doctor said you could live, you could eat straw. It would not matter. You, your body just produces cholesterol, yeah. and it, he had to put him on a medication because yeah. cholesterol still is extremely dangerous, and it can clog up your arteries. And anyway, just for that, I mean, you should yeah. see your doctor. They should do blood work. I mean, diet and exercise is great, but sometimes your body, especially as you get older. Yeah. Just hey, there's nothing wrong with going on. That's what medication is for. Medication is not a bad thing. It's a good thing when it, you're using it for, for you know, for a purpose, right? To, when you're doing every, like her husband, yeah. He's doing every, I mean, God bless him. He's yeah, like, the dream comes said, true. And he didn't want to go on medication. Yeah. And the doctor said, sorry, you have to. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, we all have, we're, we're all human. We're not perfect. So we could all work as hard and do whatever, but that's what med and that's what and medicine is a good thing. That's what it's for, right? When it's it's there to help us stay healthy. So yeah. that's that's fine. There's nothing right, wrong with that. Right, but when you don't check it out, um, yes, I have familial high lipid, so high cholesterol. So I'm in my 50s, and I said I feel I need to do something about this. Right? My doctor, I'm so grateful, states you don't need medicine. You're going to control it with your diet. So I'm doing, I have a, a blood work now, and then I'm doing it in 90 days. So is that a good question for a registered dietitian? Yeah. Is it true that we can change our way, our bodies through diet, and could we see that vision in about 90 days? Is that true? Is that a true statement? So what we were talking about before, listen to the doctor. So you, and we're all different. So what works for you is going to be different and than he's, your husband. He's 74. Yeah. So there's a bit of a difference between 50 and 74. Your body starts to metabolize everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's that's good news for you, right? Yeah, I'm so lucky. I'm grateful to that's the doctor. Good, that's good news for you. So, and I, and I love it when somebody has that option, where through lifestyle, they can, you know, they can control their health. Now, in your husband's case, he's doing everything right. He's in his 70s. And... And then, and, and that's fine, and that's yeah. what the medicine is for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So everybody has a different case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, because of my age, my doctor wants me to prevent some of the fruit that is high in uh, sugar, like oranges, mango, mm -hmm. pineapple, mm -hmm. all those that is good. I feel very strongly about this. <laughs> so I have something to say about that. You know, it's funny, we have a, we work with a lot of people with diabetes, and I'll see somebody who has to watch their blood sugar because of diabetes, and, and we'll talk about fruit, and they'll say, oh, I can't have fruit, I'm diabetic. And then I'll see them eating cookies and cake. <laughs> so, 
Again, <coughs> no bad foods, bad portions, right? Yes. So some of the fruits is a glycemic index. Some of the fruits have a higher glycemic index than others, which another more sugar is going to spike your blood sugar more. So if you are somebody who has to watch your blood sugar and you love pineapple and you love mango, I don't want to feel deprived, but just have a smaller just amount. Just you know, watch, something. watch the portions, yeah. be mindful, right? Yeah, thank you. Good That's question. Good. Excellent questions, guys. <laughs> wow. So Evelyn, is there a way that we can reach you if we want to communicate yes. still? Is that possible? So we go to the last slide here. So everybody yeah. Yeah, will receive this PowerPoint thanks to Evelyn. Thank you. Oh, this is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, so you can reach me, um, you'll, you'll receive this. So I, there's my email there and my phone number. Okay. So you can uh, make it, if the appointments are free, so you can make an appointment with me and uh, I'll sit down with you. I'll take you through the store. Oh, all that good stuff. so lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody have yeah. other questions, anything else? I, I just wanted to say we can't control our genetics. That's right. I mean, we're born with it. Yeah. However, we can control what our intake is, whether it be food or medicine. And I think we forget that too. Mm -hmm. Well, how come you have high this and I don't, mm -hmm. and we eat the same diet? Right. But we don't have the same lineage either. So. Right. Excellent, excellent point. We're all unique, right? So, yeah, yeah, excellent Just point. Just leave us a caveman. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> 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 so he's writing a book. He's writing a book. Um, is it important to eat certain things for breakfast versus dinner? I mean, should you spread them out because, you know, you have a whole day ahead of you when you have breakfast and so like that. A lot of people skip breakfast. Yeah. So I take care of another meal. Yeah, yeah. So, again, we're, I mean, I always believe in first meal of the day is very important. Yeah. So whatever the, your first meal of the day is, right? Some people get up really early, some people get up really late. Um, I, I do, I do, and eat, you know, I, I believe that it's, you know, it's gasoline in the car, right? You want to put good, good energy into your body. And again, that's individual. You know, this whole uh, intermittent fasting thing is very popular now for weight loss, and some people swear by it. Again, I mean, I can't do it to be I'd be like, you know, delirious if I'm not eating. But some people it really works really well for, and it's really good for their, they, they control their blood sugar that way, they lost weight. So we're all, and again, when you all brought this up, genetically we're all very different. So you've got to listen to your body. You know, if you do better, you know, eating a balanced breakfast when you're hungry, then you should do that. If some people do good, you know, they have to lose weight and control their blood sugar, and some people do good, you know, waiting with the intermittent fasting. Everybody's different, and you, that's a really great point that you have brought up. Yeah. Does that make sense? One thing, um, I did a diet once, and they were actually promoting the idea of keeping a very level in blood sugar, mm -hmm. and one of the ways to do it was rather than doing three meals a day, to break it into smaller, 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 smaller yes. which is sometimes as you get yeah. older and you don't have the appetite, it's easier to eat smaller portions of multiple times a day. Yeah, so to your point, that's normally, again, with the intermittent fasting and everything else going around, I just tell people, listen to your body, but I typically do recommend that for people who have to watch their blood sugar, Three small meals a day and two snacks. So I have another <laughs> slide here called Smart Snack because, again, you know, as seniors, you know, we we may not be as hungry as we used to be. So to your point, the smaller meal. It's a, so we call it a Smart Snack, right? So just like the the um, a meal and a balanced my plate, you know, we we say you know try to have your your uh, a fruit or vegetable or protein or at least two of those food groups. So that's what smart snack snacking is. It's at least uh, two food groups in a snack, right? So you guys have seen, so like a rice cake and peanut butter, a piece of fruit or some banana, hard boiled egg and a mini bagel, half a sandwich on whole grain bread, a fruit and cheese stick, a vegetable with sticks and hummus, yogurt and fruit sprinkled with granola, fruit and a handful of nuts. These are all examples of smart snacks or mini versions of a My Plate meal. So that's a really good point. Yeah. 
So listen to your body. If you're one of those people that do better on three smaller meals, and maybe two small snacks, just keeps your energy levels up, your blood sugar in control. That's a great plan too. I, I love that. That's actually what I usually tend to recommend. I can eat every two hours, but little. You know, I yeah. get hungry. And I don't need a lot. So as long as I have my a cup and a coffee, and then some for you know, a little treat. Yeah. So and that that works for you, right? It keeps your energy levels up and, and your mood good, and um, you're getting the nutrition you need. So yeah, that that's fine too. How about midnight snack? Midnight snack. Okay. So again, that's an individual thing. That's an individual thing. You know, um, some people if they have diabetes, right? They um, a bedtime snack is something that they would help them. You know, to keep their blood sugar from dropping too low well during the nighttime. So again, that's an individual thing. You've got to listen to your body. Ah, boy, uh, these these questions are like really uh, they can be pushing me, pushing pushing me. Let's see here. Very challenging. If you want to stay and exercise with us, you're welcome to. Oh, really? So, yeah, this, this uh, is a program that's celebrating 25 years, um, and it's been around for a while, uh, and most communities have at least one, um, but this is our second class, uh, but prior to COVID, we actually had three classes going in one day. That's amazing. Yeah, and what happens is people are empowered. Um, so Delia and Manny are peer leaders here. There are a couple. George is a peer leader. Wave your hand, George. Margarita is a peer leader. Margarita's behind you, Evelyn. And then um, uh, we are just excited that we can do this. We're